All rise. All persons having business in this criminal court, by Area 6, I'll get in for the county of New York for joining in. Give your attendance and you shall be married. The Honorable Judy Harris will be presiding. Be seated. Come to order. Ask anyone who lives in an American city and you'll hear the same story. You're at home, you're asleep, and all of a sudden the night air is, all of a sudden you hear bottles crack, you hear screams. You're talking about small time drug dealers that are here supplying the prostitutes. There was anger, there was frustration. When we made our reports to, to visual crimes of dope dealing, why were the police never there? Why didn't they see what we saw? It was a constant, it was an every night occurrence. A feeling that things on the street were out of control. You start off with a little pebble and it keeps going and going and going until it's at a point where there's almost nothing a police officer can do. It troubles me as a chief judge, it troubles, troubles me as a judge, troubles me as a lawyer, troubles me as a wife and mother and grandmother that the justice system has suffered such an enormous erosion of public trust and confidence. On a side street in midtown Manhattan, these big city problems are being addressed by a judicial work in progress called the Midtown Community Court. It's a high-tech experiment touting a very old idea, accountability for one's acts, tying a crime to its consequences. Sir, are you pleading guilty to that charge? In another era, this was known as the West Side Magistrates Courthouse. The judges from that time wouldn't recognize the place now. Its computer technology is space age, but the approach is handcrafted, and a defendant planning on working the system is in for a surprise. You must do one day of community service. If you fail to do that, you'll be sentenced to 15 days in jail. Elsewhere, a night or two in jail prior to arraignment might constitute an entire sentence. In the Midtown Community Court, sentencing is swift, often on the day of arrest, with an emphasis on paying back the victim of the crime, the community. One of the major drives behind the Midtown Community Court was a sense on the part of court administrators like myself and others that, in essence, our criminal court was becoming irrelevant in helping communities solve their quality of life offenses. Uh, the idea that we have is one of restorative justice, uh, one in which defendants pay back the community uh, by very visible work from a defendant who basically has no money and has nothing other than personal service to pay with. The Midtown Community Court is a two-year-old experiment focusing on prostitution, shoplifting, and street corner drug use, the quality of life crimes that chip away at a neighborhood's soul while nurturing more serious crimes. When we don't respond to these conditions, it sends the message that crime has no consequences and produces a climate where more crime can flourish. It also makes our city appear hostile to residents, businesses, and tourists. After a major rethinking of what a courthouse should be, punishment and help are combined. Drug treatment, education, even health services are right there under one roof. A defendant arraigned for shoplifting may find himself facing a drug counselor like Annette Dorsey, a former welfare mother and cocaine addict. We want to guide you to see how we can help you, how we can make your life better, but you have to do it. We can't do it for you. The philosophy at work here, that swift reaction equals more effective treatment, seems to be working. I started using drugs, you know, at the age 14, like marijuana and different drugs, cocaine, heroin. Mm -hmm. You ever smoke crack? Yeah, I started when I was 28 years old. And how has it enhanced your life? Bad. <laughs> Not good. This is more than an improved drug program. Most courts don't refer offenders to any treatment, let alone offer it on site. The effectiveness has not been lost on the businesses and foundations that are subsidizing the costs of this new approach. One of the early supporters has been the Times Square Business Improvement District. In Times Square, we are proving that neighborhoods that work together are neighborhoods that work. It was a matter of survival for the business community. And if we did not do something about it, I was despairing for the longevity of the totality of the legitimate theater in New York. But businesses in Times Square have committed more than cash. Gretchen Dykstra sits on the court's advisory board, 
which brings news from the streets to the judge. We're able to give feedback to the judge, both the sitting judge and the administrative judge, on how we think it's working. We brainstorm on new possibilities and new projects. And then our sanitation workers actually supervise some of the offenders that come out of the court on a daily basis. So that the court will be familiar with chronic offenders, judges here are not rotated. An arrestee brought before Judge Kluger may wish she didn't have such a long memory or that computerized records were not at her fingertips. By computer, I'm checking daily. Community service coordinator Jeff Hobbs is the court's eyes and ears. He uses his to spot streetwise defendants who might not show up for the court's work projects. It's either this or jail time, so treat this as important as it is as a sentence. The ones Hobbs targets for special attention do their time in the courthouse basement assisting local nonprofit groups with bulk mailings. Compliance for community service stands at 77%, the highest in the city. In fact, some offenders return to the court voluntarily after their sentences are done. When I first was introduced to this court, uh, you know, I, I didn't know really where to turn. Um, they gave me the chance and they gave me my life back, you know, uh, so therefore I'm giving, my, I'm giving back. You know, I think that's the only right thing to do. I think we are sending two messages, uh, both to the community and to defendants and to people working in this courthouse. One is that crime has consequences. It ought to be punished. But at the same time, if we're serious about doing something about crime, we have to address some of the problems that we think are associated with it. Al Waxter is a recovering addict who comes to the courthouse three times a week for drug testing. Here, he and yeah. clinical director John McGall prepare his six-month progress report. Um, I could be someplace much worse. That's true. <laughs> so I always think about that, That's true. you yeah. know, like jail. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, so looks like the, uh, the test results are uh, both negative. So I'll take you down to see the judge, and uh, we'll give her the results as well. And... Okay, Mr. McGall, why don't you report on the defendant's progress thus far in drug treatment? When defendants are sentenced to a longer term drug treatment, I find it useful to bring them back every three or four weeks to find out how they're doing, uh, but more importantly, to have them see me. In most courts across the country, they know very little about the person in front of them. And we use computers to bring that kind of information right into the courtroom. The defendant has been doing well because he's been in treatment. It's green dots. If it were red, it would tell me that something was not quite right. I'm glad to see you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in treatment. Remember, you have to stay there. You uh, can't ask judges uh, to sentence people to community service, and you can't ask a community to accept defendants on their streets unless you have a way of knowing whether someone has performed or not performed. We call that just plain accountability. And who best to fill out the defendant's worksheet than the people who live here? It could be a long overdue paint job on a senior citizen's residence or restoring tree pits along the side streets. Either way, local voices are dictating neighborhood priorities. What we do have in this neighborhood is a really clear sense of a connection to enforcement and to the judicial decision-making process. People from the neighborhood really do go sit at the court and watch when somebody they know from their block is, is in for sentencing. When I see a work crew, when our neighbors see a work crew, they smile. And the sight of these work crews is also a way for cops to keep score on the program's effectiveness and their own. What the community court does is they give to the precinct a printout of every case for each officer in the command. So if an officer is a uh, officer that deals with a lot of quality of life crimes, like a, a beat officer that has a problem with in Hell's Kitchen, for example, he would have several arrests on that sheet, and he'd be able to find out the disposition of each case. Among the 12,000 cases the court hears each year, success stories abound. Illegal street vending in the area has dropped nearly 20 percent, and street prostitution has been cut in half. I came knocking on the doors of Midtown Community Court, and one of the court officers seen me and had recognized me and asked me what was I doing there. And I told him I was trying to get off the streets. To persuade a girl to leave the street is very, very difficult. Uh, Midtown Community Court 
had the, uh, the means and the ways to do it. All of a sudden I had a place to stay, I had clothes, I had food, and they were getting ready to give me tokens to get to where I needed to go. And, and it was like, just that quick I was off the streets. The Midtown Community Court is a unique model for the criminal justice system. It's a public-private partnership that both punishes low-level offenders by sentencing them to community service and focuses on their individual needs by referring them to on-site drug treatment, health services, and educational programs. By taking care of the small stuff, it eliminates the stuff from getting bigger, like a snowball effect. And I see the community court as a giant step forward in regaining public trust and confidence. Everyone wants to see a change when they've gone out on a limb and made that first pronouncement of there's something wrong with my neighbor, help me do something about it. I'm, I'm not going to sit back. I want to work too, but I need help. And something like the community court comes along and provides that help for you. To many, this may be just another section of a city struggling with crime. But to the people who live here, it's their small town. They have found some old-fashioned notions of accountability, restitution, and a helping hand can still be effective in solving big town problems. Everyone here has agreed downstairs in the court of law to provide community service to pay back this community for the crime that they've committed. So it's in your best interest to follow these rules and regulations. They are very important and they're down here for a reason. This is a sentence, this is serious. All right, the type of work you're gonna be doing is painting, sweeping, or removing trash. You will be doing manual labor. People come in here and they have two or three days of community service. They do one, they might do two, and then you don't see them again. The first day you miss, you will receive a letter in the mail. The next thing that happens, a warrant is prepared for your arrest. Is there any questions? 